Here we have a Rust Polars project that has all these components, command line tool interface, benchmarking, integration tests, cargo, etc. But in my particular demo, I'm going to talk about unit tests. It's easy to maybe be complacent with a language like Rust because it's so safe and effective. And every time you work on it, almost everything works. You still, though, need to write some kind of uh, business logic unit test because of the fact that things can change, right? The business logic can change. And so you're building a contract so that you know exactly what's happening with your code. So in the future, if you're making a small change, it doesn't you know, create a problem down the road. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works in Rust. So if we go over to this project here, Polar CLI, we can see that there's the source code, the lib library right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this function. So this is a public function, calculate, that returns back a data frame. So this data frame processes the iris data set, does some aggregation, group by, uh, and then returns back the results in the okay data frame. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I would test this. Well, I have a directory here called tests, and inside is integration tests. So what we can do is I can right click on this, and I can say, um, open to the side and we can do a side-by-side -side view here so what I do in this particular section is add a stanza here that says test and the test calculate output basically it calls that function and then it asserts that the shape is the shape that I'm expecting so this is a great way to just double check that whatever it is I'm doing it's going to at least pass the shape test. And we could, of course, do more and more complicated things as well. So how would I run this? So if I just type in cargo run and I uh, effectively invoke the command line tool, you can see here that, in fact, yes, the shape uh, is three uh, and five. So if I want to look at how to run this in a make file, what I would do is go to this make file here and we can close this up and I have a test section and all I have to do is just type in cargo test. So the cargo mechanism in Rust is so sophisticated that once it understands uh, the structure of your code, uh, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pass flags, anything. You just type in cargo test. As long as you're able to uh, write a test, it'll find it. So let's go ahead and do make test here, or cargo test could work as well. And it's going to go through, build the project, uh, build up those integration tests, the regular tests, whatever it is you've got in that test directory. And then when it's done, it'll tell you what is actually the results, you know, how many tests have failed, how many have passed. And here we go. We can see that, in fact, it ran two tests, test calculate output shape and test CLI output. I'm only talking about this one right here, which is the shape test, and we can see that it passed. So let's make it fail here. That's always a good idea. So let's go ahead and say that the shape is going to be, you know, three and six. And, le and let's run it again and see what happens. All right, make test. It's building again. So also the nice thing about Rust is that it only compiles uh, the very last part of the code that changed. In this case, the integration test. So that speed things up. Oh, there we go. We can see that there's a problem. And this is so handy because it tells us exactly what the issue is. It says, look, uh, you told me that I was testing for 3.6, but actually returned back 3.5. So our data frame dimensions are different, and one of our tests have actually failed. So this is a great idea to just even put a little bit of logic inside of your Rust project. This is something that generative AI can be very handy with as well. That's one of, I think, the strengths of generative AI, especially with a language like Rust. So don't forget to uh, do unit testing for your code. Just a little bit goes a long way, and you can see how valuable it is.